Well, you know that God loved Nebuchadnezzar because he was going way out of his way to reveal himself to this man. Great verse today, Daniel chapter 3 uh, in verse 25. The Bible says, look, he answered, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the son of God. Man, what an amazing scene this was. You know, these three young boys, they stood the ground. Like I said, they planted their flag. They had strong convictions and they were unwilling to move no matter what was going to happen to them. And so, you know, Nebuchadnezzar being the king that he was, he fulfilled his word. He said he was going to throw them into the fiery furnace, and that's exactly what he did. He had it heated seven times hotter. And, you know, he for sure was in that spot because his, his heart was overwhelmed with pride where he felt that he was the most powerful person in the world. He was the potentate. And when, when he was going to take a life, hey, that life was going to be taken. Well, he was in for a surprise here because in the midst of this mighty cauldron, not only were these three young boys cast, but uh, in the midst of it, as they were looking, there was another that was in the fire. There was another that was in the fire with them. Not only were they not destroyed, but there was a, a fourth presence that was added, not by Nebuchadnezzar, the soldiers, but it was really the presence of God. As they were looking, what they saw was one like the Son of God. I believe this to be a Christophany, an appearance of Jesus in the Old Testament before his incarnation. And uh, what, a, what a comfort, what a revelation for Nebuchadnezzar. There's no doubt about that. What a comfort to these three young Hebrew boys to experience the presence of the Son of God, to experience the presence of Christ, the Messiah, in the fire with them. Look, they were not alone. They were willing to take a stand. They were just about to suffer mightily for the stand that they were going to take. They were thrown into the fire, and what they discovered was that in the midst of this tribulation and in the midst of this trial, in the midst of this difficulty, in the midst of this opposition to their faith, in the midst of this fire, they were not alone. That Christ was with them, walking with them. You know, uh, I just want to simply remind you of that today. I think one of the greatest tools the enemy uses against us is the is the temptation uh, to feel isolated, to feel disregarded, uh, the temptation to feel like we are all alone. And, and you know, sometimes, sometimes it is just a matter of feeling. We get so consumed with our feelings that uh, we sometimes look to them as the gauge to determine whether God is with us or whether God is not with us. Hey, he's promised to be with you. He has promised to be with you. If you're, you're a Christian, you've put your faith in Jesus Christ, Jesus himself said, and this is uh, reiterated in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Check it out yourself. The Lord has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Regardless of what your feelings may say to you, regardless of the thoughts that the devil may tempt you with, regardless of how isolated your circumstances uh, have made you feel, you need to remember today what the Word of God says. He is with you, and He is with you in a special way when you're in the fire. Maybe, maybe there is the hot fire of tribulation in your life right now. He's present, and He's present to supply exactly what it is that you need. What do you need today? What do you need him to do in your life? What do you need him to supply? Maybe the reality is you just need him to comfort your heart and to give you peace. He is the Prince of Peace. And the Bible says the scriptures are the scriptures of comfort. He will give you those things, not just to bless you, but as 2 Corinthians chapter 1 says, he will give you those things so that you can supply that same comfort he has comforted you with to somebody else in your life who is walking through the fire as well. Hey, he's present with you today. Look to him, lean on him, trust in him, feed upon him, get what you need from him. And as he gives it to you, be faithful to generously give it to others. You know, oftentimes when we're walking through a fire, it produces a compassion and a sympathy within our lives for those around us who are struggling as well. 
And so um, as you're walking through it maybe today, uh, make sure that you're identifying those around you that maybe need that encouraging word too. Father, thank you. I pray today that you would be gracious to help those of us who are hurting. God, today that you would strengthen those of us who are walking through a fiery tribulation and just manifest your presence, we pray. We ask God those souls would be comforted and that your peace that passes understanding would guard their hearts and mind. And not only that, but uh, Father, you'd give them the ability to see those around them that are in need as well. And as they receive freely from you, I pray that they would give freely to others in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.